Now that I've got this van's motor all disassembled, I might as well give you guys a lesson about how fuel injection works, since some of you young guys still don't understand it and probably like carburetors. I like fuel injection because you get better fuel economy, often better power, better starting, better all-around throttle performance, um, pretty much better everything. It doesn't even stall on jumps, or <laughs> pretty much you can do anything with your car, uh, stunt-wise or off-road, and it doesn't stall. So, it all starts with a fuel pump that's usually found inside your gas tank. It has a strainer filter on the end. Some have a one-way valve there that maintains the fuel pressure in the system after the car is turned off. The larger tube is the fuel output. It goes to your injection system. The skinnier tube is your return tube that puts the extra fuel back in your tank. And as you see, it just goes to a dead end and dribbles out. Next, somewhere attached to the intake manifold, if you have a multi-port injected engine, is these things. They're fuel injectors. All they are is a little solenoid, electromagnetic coil, with a little pin on the end, like an arrowhead. Fuel is fed to them through this steel rail, another steel rail here. And the computer turns on and off the little tiny arrowhead type pistons that are magnetic, magnetically controlled I mean, that go up and down and every time they go up fuel squirts in a little spray cone shaped spray pattern mist goes into one of the intake ports. Multi-port fuel injection is better, better than throttle body. If you had throttle body fuel injection it just looks like something like a carburetor sitting where a carburetor would be on top of your intake manifold. So the output of that fuel pump goes directly to that fuel rail and this is the fuel pressure regulator it's controlled by vacuum from the engine and the excess fuel goes back that small tube to the gas tank. Modern vehicles like this one don't have a distributor. They have what's called a coil pack. Someplace there's a computer, although that's a transmission computer. There's the engine computer. And what it does is somewhere on the engine, on the crankshaft or the camshaft, there's a crank position sensor. Every time it senses the top dead center of a piston, or at least where one should be on the rotating crankshaft, it sends the appropriate signal to fire the right spark plug wherever that may be at that moment. Of course, it also uses that set sensing the position to know exactly when to fire the injector, which is obviously before you fire the spark plug, that's fired when the piston is going down, sucking in fuel, about a half a rotation before the spark plug is fired. Now to make your engine work all properly, you have to have several sensors. This is a General Motors MAP sensor. It stands for Manifold Absolute Pressure. It measures how much suction or vacuum is inside your engine in the manifold while it's running or starting through this little you know, sucking tube port. This is where the wires plug in. This is the one on this engine. And then buried in different places, usually near the top of your motor or near the thermostat housing, is a coolant temperature sensor, which tells the motor, I mean the f f computer, whether it's summer or winter, whether the motor's hot or cold, and gives it an idea how much fuel to give it or to give it extra fuel for cold starting. This wire running down here goes to the exhaust manifold to a thing that looks just like a spark plug but except it has skinny little wires on it and the end that screws into the manifold kind of looks like a spark plug except it has no gaps, it has little flutes on it. Always on the car there's one or two of these and there's some place on the exhaust system. The oxygen sensor measures exactly how well the fuel is being burnt on your engine. In in the oxygen sensor measures how well the fuel is being burnt inside of your engine by sensing the exhaust gases and then adjusts everything to give you optimum performance and fuel economy. Now on your intake manifold, where your throttle is, this is called the throttle body, that opens and closes that plate in there which adjusts how much air your engine's breathing at any one time. On the side of it is another sensor called the throttle position sensor or TPS and it works like a rheostat when you're opening and closing your throttle while you're driving 
it's measuring exactly how much it's opening and closing. The thing below it is your idle speed solenoid. That looks something like a giant fuel injector. Works kind of the same way, except its little uh, arrow-shaped arrow -shaped piston that moves up and down moves by screwing itself back and forth usually. And that adjusts how much air can get around that throttle plate to adjust your idle speed. Some engines, but not this one, often have an air temperature sensor somewhere on the air intake system. It's very common on General Motors, but not on Chrysler's. Sometimes people like to override that little air temperature sensor with a resistor to change the reading going to the computer so it makes their engine run slightly richer in case they've added a cold air intake tube or change the back pressure in their exhaust system. Some engines on the intake system have a mass airflow sensor and that can sense exactly how much air is going into the engine and adjust fuel accordingly. Chrysler doesn't use that either but many Japanese cars do. Air comes in through there, cools the computer, goes through the air filter, goes in the throttle body, then goes into this large intake plenum, just like an air storage box, and goes down these long tubes called runners, and feeds the intake ports of your engine where the intake valves are. These longer runners, which old cars often didn't have, give the car better performance and better torque especially at lower RPMs. Some engines have an EGR valve. All that is is a valve on some place on the exhaust system, sometimes on the head of the engine, and when it opens up it's either vacuum controlled or electronically controlled, and it allows some exhaust to go into the engine when the engine's running at more than 2000 RPM. The exhaust actually goes into the intake manifold and pollutes the incoming air. This doesn't really have any advantage for the motor whatsoever, but it reduces combustion temperatures and pressure a little bit, and then that reduces nitrous oxide emissions, which reduces the yellow haze of smog like you see in California, because when nitric oxide touches moisture in the air, it turns yellow and becomes nitric acid, and that makes acid rain, and that's bad. Not all engines have EGR valves, it just depends how they're designed. Finally, the exhaust goes out the tail, but I really don't have any on any cars to show you out here. They're kind of all missing. Oh, no, there's one. Redneck Roller Coaster's got one. Well, it first goes through the catalytic converter, which is near the motor, so it stays very hot, so it works properly. And the catalytic converter reduces carbon monoxide emissions. CO is its chemical name. And that's a very good thing, too. Carbon monoxide is very deadly for our health and for the environment. Every engine made in North America since 1967 has a tube coming out of the top of the engine off on the rocker cover and that collects the smoke that builds up inside your engine from exhaust that leaks itself past the piston rings. Well, these tubes are called PCV tubes or positive crankcase ventilation. The exhaust is refunneled someplace on the engine back into the intake manifold which doesn't do wonders for your engine either but when it gets reburnt it comes out the tailpipe a lot cleaner than it would be as awful oily smelling smoke coming out of that tube going into the environment. Previous to 67 North American engines were just vented you know to the ground or underneath the car someplace and when the wind was blowing in the right direction PU smelt like burning oil was coming into your car so now let's slam this pig back together and see if it'll start so we can go abuse it some more and kill it again. <laughs>